In this video, we'll continue our discussion about completing the accounting cycle. Our focus here is going to be on adjusting entries. We've talked about the idea of an accounting cycle, and we've said that a company is going to go through one accounting cycle in each accounting period. And so we've gone through the first four steps of analyzing transactions, journalizing transactions, posting the journal entries to the ledger T accounts, and preparing an unadjusted trial balance. Our focus in this video and the next several videos will be on journalizing and posting adjusting entries. So we've discussed that under the accrual basis, some account balances will not be up to date at the end of the accounting period. And that's why we need to make adjusting entries. So for example, we have purchased supplies, we've used some of those supplies, but we haven't made any adjustments to the supplies account. So the amount of supplies we have on hand at this point is not reflected in that supplies account balance some of those supplies got used up and that needs to be in supplies expense. So that's a quick example of an adjusting entry that we'll be looking at in more detail in just a minute. So adjusting entries are entries that you make at the end of the accounting period to bring all of your account balances up to date before you prepare financial statements. The reason why we need to make adjusting entries is, is that some entries are not recorded during the accounting period because it is more efficient to do that at the end of the period. So going back to my supplies example, it could be that every time we take some supplies out of the supplies closet, we go make a journal entry to reflect that. It's not a very efficient way to do things, and it really doesn't matter if the supplies account balance is adjusted um, until you put the financial statements together. And at that point, your supplies account balance needs to match up with the amount of supplies that you have on hand. So some other examples are interest expense incurred on loans, unearned revenue that has been earned, and prepaid expenses that have expired. When we're making adjusting entries, there's a couple of things that we always want to remember. Each adjusting entry is going to impact one income statement account and one balance sheet account. Adjusting entries never debit or credit cash. So if you are doing adjusting entries and you have a debit or credit to cash, um, you know that you've done something wrong there. There are four types of adjusting entries, prepaid expenses, accrued expenses, unearned revenue, and accrued revenue we're going to be talking about prepaid expenses for the rest of this video lecture and the next. So we're going back to our problem that we were working through in module one, and we have our unadjusted trial balance here that we prepared at the end of module one. And here are our ledger account balances, which are reflected in that unadjusted trial balance. So we're going to focus now on adjusting entries for prepaid, also known as deferred expenses. So some examples here would be supplies, prepaid insurance, prepaid rent, prepaid advertising, equipment, and building. So prepaid expenses are initially recorded as assets because the expenditure benefits future periods. So recall that if we just pay this month's insurance premium, we would debit insurance expense and credit cash because the payment would only benefit the current period. But if we pay six months of insurance in advance, that expenditure has future benefits, it meets the definition of an asset, and that's why we record it as an asset, prepaid insurance. Prepaid expenses are also known as deferred expenses. 
When you're making an adjusting entry for a prepaid expense, you're always going to debit an expense account and credit the asset account. So you'll be decreasing an asset account and increasing an expense account. So at the end of August, our supplies account has a balance of $500. That's reflected on that unadjusted trial balance you prepared. And then we take a physical count of supplies on hand and determine that we have $200 of supplies on hand. So if we bought 500 and we've got 200 left, then the difference, $300, is the amount of supplies that were used during the period. So what we wanna do is charge the supplies used to the supplies account. So we're debiting the supplies account for the 300 and we're decreasing the supplies account by the $300 so that after the journal entry is posted, you can see we had a $500 debit balance in supplies. We're crediting it for the supplies used of 300 and we end up with a $200 debit balance that is what's gonna be reported on our balance sheet. So after the entry is posted, supplies has a $200 balance that reflects supplies on hand and supplies expense as a $300 balance that reflects supplies used. We also made an expenditure of $600 for, $600 for social media ads that were to run evenly across August, September, and October. And we charged that to prepaid advertising because it benefits future periods. So we have a $600 balance in prepaid advertising. The monthly expense can be determined by taking the $600, dividing it by the three months, and we get $200 per month. So we want to charge $200 to advertising expense to reflect the current month's expense. And we're going to credit prepaid advertising. Prepaid advertising had a $600 balance that was a debit, we're crediting it 200, and that brings our balance down to a debit balance of 400, which reflects the cost of the ads that have not run yet. And the balance in advertising expense is gonna be $200, and that reflects the cost of the ads that ran in August. So to summarize, after these two adjusting entries have been posted, the balance in our supplies account is equal to supplies on hand. The balance in our supplies expense account equals the supplies used during the accounting period, which is August. The prepaid advertising account balance reflects the future benefits or the payments for September and October advertising. And the advertising expense balance reflects the advertising cost for the current accounting period which is August.